Good morning and welcome to Misha's Journal Podcast, where I reveal what the Lord is saying through dreams, visions, and testimonials. Today's topic, victory, how they overcame Satan. So how did they overcome Satan? What kind of people are they? How did we overcome? Who is they, the remnant bride, the body of Christ? And I will be answering these questions. Um, This is episode four of season two. Welcome. It is morning here and I am, I wrote all of this down last night. Uh, The Lord put it on my heart to release it a little early and I'm just... I'm excited to release it. I um, just want to be obedient and do what he says. And so this is going to be, I'm going to start this out with scripture. And this is the scripture that, that he gave to me for this message. And so the first scripture I wanted to share was First Corinthians. Let's just get right into this. It's called The Greatest Gift. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, just uh, 1 to 8. It's highlighted here. So, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but not have love, but have not love, I have become sounding, a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Now, this part just um, jumped out to me, and I I just had a thought, quick thought, when I read over uh, prophecies will fail. And the reason why prophecies will fail is because uh, you can, God can change his mind about something. He'll give a prophecy through a prophet, And then um, it's up to you to pray over it. Or if you get a word from uh, uh, that's a prophecy, God can change his mind. Um, Like the people that Jonah had to warn in Nineveh. So they got the prophecy that the Lord was going to have judgment against them. But since they lamented and, and prayed and changed their mind, he changed their mind about their fate. So that's what that means. Let me read verse 13, because this is the main verse for the, for the message. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. So how did they, the body, the, the remnant bride, overcome the enemy? Um, number one, they love not their lives unto death and they were totally committed in revelations sorry i don't know why i put a s on the end of that revelation 12 verses 11 this has been highlighted to me all week and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they love not their lives unto death so this is the answer to the question of how they overcame Satan. This is it. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of his testimony. 
of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Don't forget that part. So um, they had a heart posture that was completely and totally committed to and surrendered to Christ. Now, totally committed and surrendered Christians scare Satan. He's just absolutely, he'll do anything. He'll do anything to stop you from reaching this, 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 this area in your life to where you're just completely and totally committed and surrendered. Because once you do that, that's when the fighting begins. That's when the opposition starts. That's when the enemy is breathing down your neck, trying to stop everything you do, trying to do any and everything to stop you when you get serious about your walk, when you're completely, totally committed, you're making vows to the Lord and you're keeping them. You're making promises, well, um, promises with your actions is what I should say, because we probably shouldn't just um, make um, promises and because we are human and and we, we, tend to not keep everything because circumstances and we we have a heart we want to but that's just with anybody we shouldn't just make promises and it says that in the word of of God but we make promises with our actions Lord I'm going to seek you more I'm going you know when we're seeking him more we said that we're going to do that and we do it this is where the enemy starts getting uncomfortable that's where you want it to be um this is what I like to call it. I like to call it um, having them stay on defense. I used to watch a lot of football, and I had to wean off of it. So um, I use um, that analogy, that football analogy or sports analogy. Keeping the enemy on defense is where they need to be, where you want them to be. You need to stay on the offense and keep them on defense, whatever it takes because once they're, once you're defending yourself, that's just not a good place where you want to be. You want to always keep them on defense. And so, totally committed Christians scare the enemy. The first priority is not loving your life. This is number one. You don't want to love your life. You don't want to love the cares of the world. You don't want to be carnal. Um... This comes to mind. The church, the Philadelphia church, they had a lot of attributes that the Lord loved, but one thing that they lacked, they were lukewarm. He hates carnality. The Lord hates carnality and lukewarm, lukewarmness, if, if that's a word. He hates those two things. He hates a lot of things um, like disobedience and other things that are up there as well. But carnality and lukewarmness are up there. He doesn't want us. He will not share us with the world. If you love carnality, you love the world, that's become your first love. That's what replaces him he wants to be in that spot he needs to be in that spot and in turn what does he do he protects us he keeps us he guides us he leads us we're in a safe haven i love um psalm 91 is where i always go under the underneath the wings of the father and it's for a reason it's not because the lord is just you know, he, he just wants our attention for no reason. It's for our protection. The enemy is, he has access to us if we're not in that place. That's why, the, for example, if it says in the word of God, do not let the anger fall. Um, do not let the night fall on anger. If you're angry at someone, you had a fight or um, an argument or disagreement. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. And the reason 
why you don't want to do that is because then the enemy can come in. And that's basically an example of why we need to renounce everything and have the Lord take number one place in our lives. That's that's one of the main reasons. Um, and he'll he'll tell us and, and he'll warn us. And we're just thinking, well, why, you know, um, just like I'm a mother or father and they're, you know, letting their ch- child know, don't do this or go there. You know, you set boundaries. And same thing, this is what the father does with us because we have our kids' best interest in, at heart. We know what what will happen if they cross certain boundaries or are they in the wrong place at the wrong time. So does the father. He sees all. He sees everything. And so that's what these, that's what these, um, the word is for. That's what the word is for. It's to instruct us in the way we should go. He's a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. An amazing father. He always has our best interest. Always. We can trust him. We can trust him uh, to lead and guide us. It's never for for any reason other than protecting us. And so the first the first priority is not caring about your life. Um, let's see, the first. And second priority, I'm not caring about your life. And then remaining faithful above all else. That's it. Remaining faithful. So getting yourself into the place of being faithful to God. He's always faithful to us, even if we aren't. And it was probably a struggle because we had to pray for that, right? We have to pray for everything. We have to pray for us to want to commune with him, to want to worship, to want to pray, to want to read the word, because we don't have this in in ourselves. So um, praying to be faithful, completely faithful, we may not always be there. So um, that is a goal. That's just a goal. It's an ever, ever ending goal. It's just something that we're going to have to pray over every day. Die to flesh, remain try to remain faithful but this this is it we need to remain faithful above all else and die to self um die to our carnal nature and choose him so it's a decision it's a decision that we make um once you've made that decision and you know if you have if you have made that decision The enemy definitely knows when you've made that decision. That's when they start fighting you tooth and nail. And it's a good thing. Um, This is why Paul, the apostle, talks about all of the things that he went through. And he counts it joy. He counts it all joy that he's gone through these things. It's not because he is one of those people that loves pain. And then it's... it's, um, motivation for him no it's it's because we know that we're on the right track and we're doing the right thing and we count it all joy when we have a a ton of opposition because we know the enemy's going to fight us when we're doing the right thing when we're going to do when we're doing something right for the kingdom um, i have another scripture that i want to share hebrews 10 and 39 but we are not of them that draw back under perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. I think I added that in here because I wanted to make sure that um, that we're not drawing back from uh, what it is. From what it is that the Lord is uh, has called us to do. So in the Lord's army, it is an army that we may have to lay down. We have to lay down our life. 
um, just like the apostles did. So I wrote this um, because this is a reality of ours. If we are in a war, if we're in a war, spiritual war, and we're in an army, we have to know that we may have to lay down our life. And so um, this is what all of this is all about, the training and everything. Um, Christ was the blueprint. Christ um, came here. He died. A horrible death. Was resurrected. And he, he kind of taught us the way to go. He taught us how to do it. He taught us everything. The apostles followed suit and they did the same thing. Not all were martyrs, but this is basically the walk. And Christ is the blueprint. We cannot be defeated in doing the will of God. So if we are in, in all the way inside of the will of the Lord, we're winning. And that's what, um, that's what Paul was saying. So we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of, that we testify. Um, now, our testimony is what the blood of Jesus Christ does for us. Now, we all have a testimony, how we came to Christ. And, and so when we're out sharing or, or whatever it is that we will be doing, um, we, we're not... It's not about your testimony, um, how you came to Christ. Well, you, you can share that as well. But this, the testimony that this is speaking of specifically is what the blood of Jesus Christ did for you. Um, because we can have a, I, I think I have about five, maybe more testimonies within my life that I could share. But the what Jesus Christ has done for me, the, what the blood has done, is where we want to focus that's where we want to focus. And once we focus on that, um, if you've noticed the enemy tries to fight us on that or make us and have us and embarrassed about our testimony. And once you get over yourself, because I, I realize that and I talked to the Lord about it, Holy Spirit confirmed it. The enemy will try to make you feel embarrassed about things. He'll, he'll try to fight you on it, on your testimony and you're just it's like that one thing. Some people don't even want to share theirs because they're embarrassed about what happened or how they got there. But no, this is this has power. Once you get over that, there's power in that. There's power in your testimony. You need to get get over it. Get over it. Humble yourself. This is where we need to be. This is where the Lord. This is all of these things being broken everything that the, all the messages that I've shared everything leads up to this everything is leading up this is what the Lord he feeds us a little bit and he has us go further and this is what this is all about this is how we defeat him this is it by the blood of the lamb by the word of our testimony so once we accept Christ once we're living the way we're, that we need to live not in a carnality and, and drawing uh, not drawing back but pushing forth, but going forward. If you have made that decision and you're not going back and forth, good, that's great, that's wonderful. You're on the right track. And now, now, now's the time. How do we defeat Satan? By the blood of the Lamb, which we established, we're saved, but we're not just sta saved. We're living a righteous life. We're living the way that we're meant, that the Christ was meant for us to live out this Christian walk. And... We have a testimony, and our testimony, we need to just revisit it and, and just uh, whatever you need to do, write it down again, just to have it so that you'll, this is the way that you defeat him. This is the goal. This is the point. And so I want to conclude with just be proud of your testimony. Because the enemy sure is that they they don't want you. They don't they don't want you to be in that place of where you're proud of your testimony. Where we become broken and weak. When we're broken and weak, this is exactly where the Lord wants us to be. And we're made perfect in his weakness. So 
when you're broken, you don't care about yourself. You don't care about how it looks or whatever it is when you're broken. This is exactly where the Lord wants us to be. So he can use us. So he can meet us where we are, change us, mold us, fix us, all of the above. And the blood of Jesus Christ causes us to be in the presence of the Father. He sees all the, the, the things that I thought were ugly and all the ugly things. He no longer sees us as that. He sees us as Christ, right? For his glory. It's all for his glory. It's not for us. We This is the thing. We, we kind of we get embarrassed or, or um, I don't know. That's just an example I'm using because I don't have another one right now. Um, we, whatever the enemy's trying to do. What, however they're trying to, to to thwart your process with having your testimony. It's the one thing. It's the one thing that you have that they cannot take away. You cannot take away. They cannot take away your testimony. It's amazing. It's amazing what the Lord gives all each and every one of us. It's like no two testimonies are the same. And what's come to mind just now is when one of the apostles, what were the, you know, they, he, Jesus sent them out two by two to go um, heal the sick and, and preach the word and, and bring them, make disciples. And I think it was Stephen. He was still not healed. And I remember the Lord spoke to him and said, your testimony is greater your testimony is, is greater because you're not, because you aren't. So that's just an example. I wanted to change, kind of change the example to have more. But yes, and I'm concluding with Romans 8 and 28. I want to read it. I know basically it's, um, he works all things together for our good. But I want to read the, the scripture. I'm concluding with this. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. It's about his purpose, not our own. So once we come to the end of ourselves, that's when he can use us. That's where we want to be. Put ourselves, put lay, lay down, lay your life down and put yourself in. You can be, he can use you mightily do great exploits for the kingdom once we get over ourselves it's not about us I don't I don't know what people are doing I don't know why they're after trying to make a business there it reminds me of the temple when Jesus turned over the tables like making a just a spectacle of his, his of his will of his kingdom trying to bring in you know people are it's about money and and it's about pointing fingers and fighting and it's just craziness that's not what it's about it's about what God says it's about and it's about his purpose his will, his purpose I pray that you enjoy this message I pray that it hits home and that it, it that you search what the blood of Jesus Christ did for you so that you can testify and be proud of your testimony. Amen. Well, I'll see you next time and thank you for listening.